Today we're going to take a look at the Hisense HAG and see how it stacks up against last year's H8F. Hisense has been known to deliver a very good 4K TV at a budget-friendly price. Hey, my name is Shaq and I'm a tester here at Ratings.com where we help people find the best products for their needs. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for the latest videos or visit our website to see detailed reviews on TVs, soundbars and much more. In this video, we're going to start by looking at the design and inputs of the HAG, then move on to the picture quality and we'll also take a look at motion handling, input lag and finally sound. As always, you can check out all the timestamps in the description below or use the YouTube chapters to skip to the parts that you care about most. We bought the 55 inch to test, but it's also available in 50, 65 and 75 inches. We expect the other sizes to have very similar picture quality. The design of the HAG is very similar to the H8F, but slightly refreshed to match the H9F. The stand is adjustable with two positions. Right now we have it set in its wider option. The other option is slightly narrower. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of wobble when the TV is placed on its stand. The borders are thin and look pretty sleek. There's a nice little lip at the bottom of the display to match the feet, giving it a premium look. If you take a look right below the Hisense logo, you'll find a single button that can be used to turn the TV on or off and change the inputs, which can get annoying, so you should definitely keep your remote nearby. Taking a look at the side of the TV, we'll see that it's not too thick and it's gonna look good on the wall. Also, you're gonna notice the side inputs. That's where you're gonna find three HDMI 2.0 ports, two USB ports, and one tuner. The rest of the inputs are on the back, where you'll find an HDMI 2.0 port, a composite in, 3.5 millimeter jack, and an ethernet port, as well as a service port. This year, there are also added hooks on the feet, so you can keep your cables nice and managed. Now we'll move on to picture quality. We'll be comparing to currently available TVs, but competing models may change as TVs are released throughout the year. For an updated comparison with the new models as we buy and test them, visit our review page on our website, which is linked down below. First, we'll start with contrast ratio. The contrast ratio is the relative brightness of the white areas versus the dark areas in a scene. It's generally considered one of the most important aspects of picture quality as a high contrast ratio helps dark scenes to appear more detailed without losing details in the gray. The HAG has an excellent contrast ratio. Although it isn't a big difference, it's not as good as it was on the H8F, but this could be due to panel variants. So now onto the local dimming. Local dimming is a feature which allows the TV to control or turn off different areas of the backlight to produce deeper areas of dark scenes and improve picture quality. The HAG has a decent local dimming feature and it'll perform pretty good, but it'll still crush small light details. You'll also notice a little bit of blooming around small light sources such as stars, and they're not gonna pop as much as they would in some other TVs that perform better with local dimming. Now onto viewing angles. Having good viewing angles helps keep the image accurate when viewed from an angle, which can be important if you're watching the TV with a large group of people or if your couch is positioned to the side of the TV. Like many other VA panel TVs, the HAG performs pretty poorly in terms of viewing angles. Even with the enhanced viewing angle feature on, you're gonna notice a shift in colors almost instantly, followed by colors washing out and black levels raising. So now let's see how it handles reflections. Good reflection handling is important so that dark scenes don't get washed out by the ambient light that's present in the room that you're putting the TV in. The HHG performs like most of the other mid-range TVs in terms of reflection handling. The semi-gloss finish does help to diffuse some of the reflections, but in a bright room, it will struggle to minimize the reflections that are visible, making it difficult to see what's on screen. SDR peak brightness refers to how bright your TV can get when watching most standard non-HDR content. A brighter screen will help your TV overcome reflections and glare. This TV gets bright enough to overcome a lot of glare and is a nice improvement from the H8F. Unfortunately, the brightness will change depending on what content you're watching. If you're watching a lot of HDR content from services like Netflix or Amazon Prime, then the ability to produce brighter regions of the image is important to get impactful highlight detail. This is one of the most noticeable reasons why some TVs seem to really pop with HDR content while others don't. The HHG is only okay in terms of HDR brightness, and it won't really make the highlights stand out in comparison to other TVs with a better HDR peak brightness. Something else to consider if you watch a lot of HDR is the color volume and gamut of the TV. If you really want the colors to pop, then a wide color gamut and high color volume is also important to display the wider color spaces available in HDR. The HHG offers decent color volume that can produce deep and saturated color thanks to its excellent contrast ratio. It also has a really good wide color gamut that will perform very well in most HDR content. Next, let's look at the gray uniformity performance. Our gray uniformity test checks for issues with the panel where all the different pixels are supposed to display the exact same color, but sometimes that doesn't actually happen. This can result in distracting areas known as a dirty screen effect, which is most noticeable during intense movement, such as watching sports or playing video games. The gray uniformity on the HAG is decent, but still an improvement over the last year's H8F. The edges have gotten better from the H8F, but there's still some dirty screen effect that's visible right in the center.
Now on to the response time. The response time is the average of the time it takes for the TV's pixels to transition from one color to the next. The HHE has a fast response time, which is really good, especially in comparison to last year's H8F, which was actually really disappointing. You're gonna have a hard time noticing any overshoot, but there's still gonna be some motion blur trailing behind fast moving objects. The H8F, on the other hand, had a very noticeable trail of motion blur behind fast moving objects. For those of you who really care about getting the clearest motion, black frame insertion is a feature which flickers the backlight, reducing persistence blur. For the HHE, you just have to enable the motion clearness feature and you're good to go. The TV will reduce the flicker to 60 Hz and another thing you'll notice is that there's less duplication in the motion than with the H8F. If you plan on using your TV for gaming, input lag is one of the most important things for you to look at. Coming in around 11 milliseconds, the HHE feels incredibly responsive while in game mode. Unfortunately, the HHE does not support auto low latency mode and you have to manually switch it into game mode, which is a shame as there are other TVs that automatically swap into auto low latency mode like the LG Nano 85 and most of the other LG TVs. On to smart features. You'll see that the HHE has great features thanks to Android 9.0. You're not going to have any problems finding apps for your TV as Android is packed with many different options. The remote keeps its design from last year and it gives you shortcuts to many of your favorite apps like Netflix and integrates Google and Amazon Alexa directly into the remote for voice commands. So for sound, the HHE delivers a little more than the H8F did last year. The speakers are better built and the frequency response is okay with bass that has, still has some punch to it but the bass is still lacking in any kind of rumble. It does have a good balanced sound profile for dialogue though. Like always, if sound is something that's important for you, a soundbar or speakers will definitely be a better option than relying on the speakers on the TV. So overall, the HAG is a good 4K HDR TV with great picture quality. It's very similar to the H8F with a few improvements such as the response time getting considerably faster, better SDR peak brightness, and some improvement to local dimming. Unfortunately, the black uniformity on our unit wasn't as good as the H8F, which could be due to panel variants with our specific unit. The HAG performs similar to the Vizio M series Quantum 2019, but does fall short on a few points, like black uniformity, where the Vizio comes in with an amazing score. The HAG will, however, have a brighter SDR peak brightness and will feel more responsive due to having lower input lag. So that's it. What do you think of the HAG? Is it an upgrade from last year's H8F? Let us know what you think down below. Also, we're hiring in our offices in Montreal for various positions. So if you want to help people find the best products for their need, visit our careers page. You can check out all the measurements on our website, and if you'd like to receive early access to our latest results, be sure to check out our Insiders program. If you like this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.